But Lauren, I never want to say goodbye to you. I want to wake up every morning and kiss you on the face. I want to go to bed at night and know that in the morning I'm going to wake up to the most beautiful woman I've ever laid eyes on. My desire from here on out is to live for you, to commit to you, to love you, to hold you, to kiss you a lot. Lauren, I want to spend the rest of my life with you. I'm my whole life. Guys, I'm so happy. You're so happy to see me. Thank you. Oh, there's so many people. This is awesome. Hi. Guys. This is adorable. I mean, guys, this is a fraction of the people who have watched you guys on the show this season. How does that make you feel? It's amazing. It's so nice to have all of your support. I, we, I know we both really appreciate it, so thank you. <laughs> uh, Lauren and I were talking, I think it was yesterday morning before all this, you know, became public, and she's like, I, you know, we've been stuck in a house a lot here recently. She's like, what's it, like, kind of like on the outside? I was like, you're going to feel so loved, and this helps, like, us feel loved. Um, we appreciate it. Well, congratulations, guys. They did get engaged on the show, as I'm sure all of you know. Look at this ring. It's gorgeous. <laughs> he did good. <laughs> Tell me about the whirlwind that has been going on since we last, you know, saw that proposal moment last night. I mean, a lot has happened in less than 24 hours for you guys. Yes. Um, so last night the proposal happened. We did a live show. Um, we left the live show at 8 o'clock, and we got on a plane at 9.15 in, at LAX. Flew overnight to New York, landed in New York this morning at like 6 o'clock, did Good Morning America um, at 7, did... Uh, I don't know how you're remembering all this, because yeah, I'm already like... Blair, oh. Kelly and Michael, and then we did, I don't know, 9 or 10 different interviews in between then, and then had lunch and came over here to see all of you. This is our last one! <laughs> and you're our last thing for the day, really, I guess, uh, our last thing together, you know? On our big media tour, if that's what you want to call ben, it. Ben, guys, Ben's no longer The Bachelor, but look what he, he found yeah. a great woman, so we're so happy for you. I'm happily Amazing. no longer The Bachelor. Yeah. So tell me about the finale. Um, I don't know if you watched it together or, or separately or, or how that went, but tell me about um, how it felt watching it back. Yeah, so I actually haven't watched it yet. Um, I've seen our part. Uh, but I haven't watched the whole thing, and I don't even know if I'm going to because what's the sense in reliving something that happened, you know, weeks ago? Um, so, I, but I did watch the proposal, and then of course he reproposed last night, which was nice. Yeah. Proposed twice. <laughs> proposed twice. You know, I, I, yes, it was something I wanted to do because as, as we were watching this uh, together up until I don't know, I think it was pretty much when it was down to the final three, you kind of stopped watching it. We'd have these talks, and it was just getting really hard, and there'd be great questions that she would come up with, ones that I have a hard time answering sometimes, like, you know, what was going through your mind the day that you proposed to me while you also said goodbye to JoJo, you know, an hour earlier? And it's like, that was really difficult, but, like, I was very confident in that decision, and, and I still am. And it kind of popped in my head one night as we had uh, what they call a happy couple weekend, which is where we kind of get away and hang out. And I thought, if I could, like, re-propose to her or recommit this to her when there hasn't been another woman involved in a long time and we can try to make this a little more normal because, uh, you know, as we've been out of the show, like, our relationship is just built to a point where, like, there's no question in my mind, like, Laura and I are meant for each other. And so I wanted to be last night, like, just that special night to, like, start our relationship public and, and do just that re-proposal. 
And your families were there. Did you know your family was going to be there? You look sort of surprised. I had no idea. I thought that my siblings would be there, but um, I thought they were just going to be like back in the green room, and I had no idea that my parents were there. So I was shocked, um, especially when they came out and got to see him, you know, propose and. Um, and then his parents were there too, so all of our family was there. It was really great to have them there. Yeah, it was a great moment because I don't think that's ever happened before. So it was actually it was nice to see you guys as like a real couple with your families there, a sort of real engagement, which yes. is broadcast. We are on real TV, people, but. right? Yeah, it's still, <laughs> it's it's a little crazy to still do it on TV, but it was a secret I had been keeping for a couple of weeks to get our family there. And there have been little things that had happened that, like, almost spoiled it, where, like, her siblings would text and be like, oh, I'm just meeting mom and dad at their hotel. I'd be like, I think they met your sister at her house. And they're like, she's like, oh, oh yeah. yeah. I forgot about that. that he makes... did say that. And I was just like, oh, yeah, I we, didn't we think twice about, about... Oh. Um And then, like, I, I don't know if you watched last night, but, like, uh, Chris Harrison during the live show was like, you know, your families are here. Have they met yet? And I was like, she's like, families are here. I was like, your brothers and sisters are backstage. Like... <laughs> Um, so there have been little things, but we kept the secret hidden until so the big announcement. Speaking of your families, Ben, your parents have gotten a lot of love, especially your mom um, actually, on Twitter. We all love Ben's mom, don't we? <laughs> She's the best. <laughs> well, I haven't seen this. I, you know, we, we have literally jumped in a plane and done all this today, so I haven't got like caught up on social media at all. So I think it was because during the episode, you can tell how much your parents love you and wanted you to find mm -hmm. the right person. Um, you know, tell me about your relationship with your parents and what it was like for them to kind of be on this journey as well. You know, during Caitlin's season, they were never a part of it because even though it was the final three, uh, we never did hometowns um, that season until the final two. And so they, I had this crazy thing happening to me in my life, right? I did the bachelorette and then I was asked to be the bachelor and my family was never a part of it. And so it would just be stories that I was telling to them and, and they really couldn't relate. Um, so this season was important to me to get them involved. That's why we went to Warsaw. Um, that's why, you know, uh, we tried to have a date with them involved in it. And then that last um, episode where, where they came to Jamaica, and, and I have a great relationship with my parents. I'm an only child. Uh, you know, they care a lot about me. Um, and as they met both women, I think they're in that same place where, like, these are great women. Um, and I think most people can agree, like, they were both great women. But now that they know Lauren and they've been able to, like, see us together, um, they could not be more excited. And last night was a really emotional night for them because it's, like, in the, in the craziest way possible, like, my son is on stage with his fiance. It's not what they expected for their only child, but we got to keep life interesting a little bit. <laughs> so speaking of, you know, the finale, you had JoJo and Lauren, and, you know, you said I love you to two girls, and that's never really happened before either. Yeah. So kind of go through your thought process with that. You don't regret it, obviously. Um, we hope not, but... Yeah, you know, I don't regret it. Um, would I say that... Was it maybe the best decision to express it? That's hard to say, right? It led me to Lauren, and which is all I could ask for in the end. Um, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, but... Yeah, it hasn't been, I guess, verbalized before, and, I, and I've kind of questioned people. I'd be really surprised through the history of the show if no other bachelor or bachelorette has felt really strong feelings for both people or more than one person. Um, that would surprise me if it hasn't happened. Um, but for me, it was just something that was happening, and I had to express it. I didn't know what else to do. I you know, promised myself that I would express and, and, and be as vulnerable and honest with the women involved through the whole process. So when I got down to that point where I was like, I, I'm having these feelings, I need to say them, I said them. Um, you know, yeah, I, I guess not everybody loved that, uh, but like I've you know, said since then, it, it spit me out with her, and that's all I could ask. What was it kind of like for you, Lauren, being in that headspace, knowing that there was one girl left, but you knew what you felt for Ben and what Ben felt for you? So that must have been kind of a difficult thing to deal with. Yeah, so I think that's why I was so nervous leading up to that day. Um, as confident as I was in what we had, I also knew what The Bachelor was, right? Like it's set up for you to have more than one relationship and I was well aware and I was really close with JoJo so I knew how great she was. So I was like, it's really not that far-fetched to think that he has very strong feelings for her as well. So then, you know, after we got engaged, obviously I was so relieved, but right afterwards we were in Jamaica and Ben told me about all of his feelings for JoJo and everything that 
had happened in their relationship and how it got to that place. And obviously, I couldn't fully understand what it was exactly that he went through, but I wasn't surprised. But, um, you know, it was there were points where it was hard, more so just hard to understand, because I think, you know, some of us have been in love more than once or with more than one person, but usually not at the same time. So it's just hard to totally wrap your mind around, but we're so far removed from even the day that we got engaged, like our relationship has progressed so much further that I don't know, like I don't even really associate, yeah, yeah. It's, it's weird too because you're dating these, these girls, but you're also living with them and they're becoming your friends right. at the same time. So it's, it's tricky. The Bachelor, man, it's really tricky. <laughs> Put you in some weird situations. <laughs> Definitely. If there's, uh, it's funny, you get questioned like, you broke the rules or do you regret like making a decision you didn't? It's like, when you're in it, it is so, there's never like a clear cut right or wrong answer. Um, there's not a lot of like guidance, right? There's not, I, I think one common question always is like, well, how fake is it? And it's like, you don't understand how real it actually is. Like, it's very real, and that's what makes it so difficult, I think, especially as you're trying to navigate this and, and, for lack of a better term, like manage relationships while at the same time knowing they're talking in a house and then also exploring deeper feelings for somebody and knowing where it might end in a proposal. Like, there's a lot going through your mind as this, you know, continues. And then there's cameras all around you, too, Definitely. which is an added yeah. bonus, I guess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yes. Tell me, did you guys ever get, do you get used to the cameras being on your dates? Um, or is it always something that you're, you're aware of? I mean, you get used to it, I guess, in a way. But I know that both of us, you know, my brothers kind of jokingly asked Ben about his intentions for the fantasy suite. But, um, you know, I think both of us were looking forward to that time so very much because we hadn't been alone ever we I mean we would have the same sorts of conversations but it's just so much more intimate when you're it's just you two and there's not a million other eyes like on you and um so we were both looking forward to that but you do kind I don't know I kind of forgot I guess in a way um I was able to be my complete self as was Ben but it's also nice to have that time where it's just the two of you I think it, on that first night, um, and Lauren and I did it then, I remember that, and, and it was kind of a common practice for me because you would sit down with these women when they walk into this mansion and there's cameras around and you get out of a limo and you can just tell like their eyes are in a thousand, a thousand different places because there's you know 10 cameras or whatever around you. And one thing I tried to do was, I, because I had done The Bachelorette and I kind of gotten used to it, is like just take a second and look around. Like just get your surroundings because if you act like they're not there, like that's going to you know, mess with your mind. Just know they're there. Know it's their job to kind of watch you date and, and tape it. And, and it, you get used to it, I think, after a while. You, you kind of forget about it. And I'm sure the camera operators and the producers probably end up becoming your friends. And they're kind of involved in your relationship a little bit because they've been there every step of the way. They've seen a lot. <laughs> Except the fantasy suite. <laughs> That's that. true. Yeah. So... <laughs> So, Ben, for you, um, seeing JoJo uh, last night, yeah. did you feel like there was a good amount of closure and you guys can kind of walk away and maybe be friends? Definitely. Yeah, and, and I don't, it wasn't really even something I was worried about even going into last night. Like, I, I knew that, well, I had hoped, I guess, there was a mutual respect there, um, that I guess JoJo understood what the situation was and that, you know, now Lauren and I are very happy and, and she would hopefully know that and know that it worked out for the best. Um, and I think after the announcement last night that jo JoJo was going to be the Bachelorette, everybody kind of is happy now, you know? I mean, everybody involved seems to have their opportunity to, to make the most of this. And um, I walked away from last night just being excited for JoJo, but also just being excited that now I'm public with Lauren and, and we'll watch more couch now and, yeah. <laughs> and then hang out. Such a relief that I don't have to watch myself on TV. Yeah. I can just watch someone else. <laughs> some of your friends. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, were you surprised when they announced that JoJo was the Bachelorette, or did you kind of know? I mean, there is speculation, I think, always. And, and even Lauren and I would always talk, like, on our happy couple weekends, like, who do you think it's going to be? And we would run through each scenario. And, I mean, JoJo is definitely somebody we had talked about, but 
I don't, I'm not involved in that process at all, and, and for good reason. Like, I don't know if I can keep as many more secrets than <laughs> the one I had. Um, but it was a surprise. Uh, I'm not shocked, though, uh, and, and it definitely, she deserves it, so. Well, it must be, it will, will be nice and an interesting experiment to watch JoJo on The Bachelorette. But I guess, you know, with Caitlin Bristow and, and you were on TV with that, it all evens out. We just keep going down the bachelor chain. Yeah, exactly. It could have been, I mean, people were saying that it was Lauren, and you probably knew the whole time, it's not Lauren. <laughs> I hope it's not Lauren. <laughs> it's not, it's not me. <laughs> so, Lauren, um, you know, being a girl watching the show, I'm always so curious about what it's like to be in a house with 25 women. Um, when you first signed on to be on the show, what was that like? Did you have to quit your job? Did you have to go shopping? Did you, you know what I mean? Like, where do you get all these beautiful clothes? Oh my gosh, you guys. I had to shop so much. I don't own a lot of dresses. And they were like, bring enough dresses for X amount of time. I was like, there, I don't have that. So I had to go shopping, which wasn't, I mean, it wasn't that bad. Don't get me wrong. I'm not complaining. <laughs> but, um, and then living with a group of women, it actually was really fun. You know, we spend more time together than we actually do with Ben oftentimes. So you do form these really strong friendships. And for me, even as strange it is that we were all dating the same guy, I was able to kind of separate the two. So I still to this day have, you know, really good friendships that came out of the show who I know will be lifelong friends. And, you know, I, in college, I wasn't in a sorority or anything. So it was kind of like, I felt like what it might feel like to live in a sorority or something. But I mean, it was fun. And it was kind of, you know, you're away from your family, you're away from your friends. So the group of girls really does become your support system through all of the craziness, as weird as it sounds, you kind of rely on each other. So I really enjoyed it. And did you guys read a lot of books? We know Olivia read a lot of books. <laughs> Do they take your yeah. phones away? Like, what is it like in the mansion? Is that all, like, uh, true? Or, you know, we got to clear up this. this yeah, no phones. No phones, no iPads, no TV, um, no iPods, no music. So you really have to get creative. Um, I think Amanda and I one night, we, like, someone had a marker from the soccer date that they were drawing, like, marks on their we face. Gotta get the, and so get Amanda and I were really bored because we don't have any phones. So we just, like, started drawing all over our faces and, like, blacked out our teeth, like, just being total weirdos. But, I mean, you're, yeah, you kind of get creative because, and you have to really focus on the relationships in front of you, not only Ben, but the friendships because there aren't any distractions, really. I'm assuming you girls work out a lot together and drink a lot together, which sounds like an yeah, ideal. The working out part, not so much. <laughs> um, eating, snacks, drinking, etc. Yeah, sleeping, but yeah. Well, you girls all look great, so I, I figured you were working out every day. I'm sure everyone else did. Um, ben, you kind of had that experience too because you were on the other side of it. Um, what's it like in the house with a bunch of bros? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, it is, it, it's kind of like Lauren said, like I wasn't in a fraternity, uh, I guess I was for a little bit, but never lived in the house, and um, you do become really good friends with everybody, uh, but you have to find really creative ways to like entertain, and of course, as a bunch of bros, we would do, this is embarrassing, um, we do push-up contests, oh, God. Uh, where like, it's, I guess it's a game, where like one guy does 10 push-ups, then the guy next to him does 11, then the guy next to him does 12, and you go this in a This is circle. not real. No, it is. Is it real? Yeah, that's real. Oh my. Um, and, and then we also did, like, the camera crew would have sandbags to, like, weight down the lighting and stuff. So you'd take the sandbags and, like, walk around the house with the sandbags to, like, stay in shape. It's a lot. Um, but, I mean, when you're stuck in a house with a bunch of people and you're trying to take your mind off of things, that's the only, you know, thing you can do. You did this all with Sean B., who's, like, you know, jacked up. I see him on Snapchat and with Caitlin, who they have the best Snapchat ever. I heard, oh, they do. well, you tweeted that you want them to help you set up your Snapchat. <laughs> yeah, I was nervous to set up a Snapchat. I have a Snapchat, but I don't use it, and I was nervous to use it until this was all done because I would definitely make a mistake. <laughs> um, I did this all with Sean. Sean's a good buddy of mine. I was just with him this week, actually. Um, so he taught me how to, to work out, but I don't take... <laughs> I don't take pictures of my shirt off next to him. He's, yeah. he's pretty jacked. So have you learned anything from Caitlin and Sean and previous bachelor and bachelorettes about how to go about now that you're out in the open and, and your relationship's public? How to go about navigating that now? You talked to Catherine, right? Yeah, I talked to Catherine Lowe, and she just gave me some good tips and... 
you know, mostly was there to ask how I'm doing, which was really nice because sometimes you do feel, and I think it's same with in Ben's position, you do feel like, oh my gosh, I'm alone in this. Like no one else has ever gone through this. But then you remember there are people like Catherine and Sean who have been through it and have made it out um, and have a successful relationship and now have a baby on the way. So she had some advice. Um, also just was there to listen, like if I did have any questions. And I know Sean had some advice for you. Um, but People, you really realize, I think, doing this is how great and it's funny to say, like, ba the Bachelor family really is. And you always hear about it. But, I mean, like, Trista and Ryan Sutter have reached out to me almost a couple times a week, both of them, just with encouragement, and, you know, especially when times got a little, like, tough for a while on social media. And they're like, just keep your head up. It's going to be great. You and Lauren are going to be great. And then, you know, Sean and Catherine and um, even Chris Souls has been, like, a huge part of just, like, he's really funny. And he sends me funny texts, like, during the week. Or he's like, dude, I've been there. I get it. Um, I, but I could go on and on. I could name, you know, 20 people that have done the, the, the show before and have reached out just to encourage us. Mm -hmm. and, and it means a lot because for a while you do feel like you're on an island. You know, there's only 20 other bachelors that have done this. Um, and, and every experience is different. So it's nice to have those, those people kind of step up and say, hey, it's going to be good. It's going to work out. And you have Bachelor Nation supporting you as well. Which is Thank you. unlike anything. Thank you. I mean, that's what Twitter, social media is an interesting thing, especially with this kind of show. Because, you know, you can get the negative comments and you can get the positive stuff. But always focus on the positive. I'm sure they're rooting for you anyway. Yeah. Um, so I know you guys have been doing a lot of Netflix and chill, as you said. So much. Um, <laughs> what are you most excited to do now? What, what's going to be your first date? Ooh, that's a secret. Ben has a secret yeah. date plan for us. I have a, so there is... Helicopter ride through yeah, New York. Yeah, we're going to go through <laughs> New York. So I'm going to do one last, like, blowout date here in New York. We're going to be here for a couple days, and I can't wait to kind of, like, take her to dinner. It's going to be a nice, like, private dinner. And then I think our dates are going to, like, just get to, like, being very normal. Um, just to hang out, you know. I can't wait for her to get out to my house in Denver and kind of fix that up with me because she's super excited about that, making it a home and... Um, but for right now, we're going to enjoy New York um, and just rest for a couple days. Yeah, you got to get some sleep. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you're moving to Denver? I am. Are you excited? Yes, I'm so excited. I'm very, very excited to, st I mean, just to start life. Like, we've been waiting for this for what seems like forever, and um, I couldn't be more excited to move out there. And lastly, before I go to the audience, tell us about your wedding plans. When can we expect to hear about the wedding? Babe, tell them about our wedding plans. <laughs> um, we've, we've been asked a lot recently, and I think even last night was a nice little see if we would, you know, jump on board and get married last night. Your poor pastor, man. Yeah, he flew all the way out and just stood there and was like, all right, well, he I stood guess. stood there for a little while, too. Yeah. He was like, am I doing this? Am I not doing this? <laughs> um, but we don't want to push back a wedding. Uh, I'm more confident than ever, and I know Lauren is as well, that we want to get married, um, and we want to do it soon. But so I think either 2016 or very early 2017, the one thing we do want is, you know, through this, you are kind of isolated. Your friends and family don't get to be a part of it, um, it you know, leading up to the engagement, really the, like, last night's show when they find out that we're engaged. We want our friends and family there to celebrate with us, and so we want to make sure we plan it right uh, and get a nice big celebration in order. So will it be uh, televised or not? I know that you were at Tanner and Jade's televised wedding, which yes. looked like a ton of fun. I'm not going to lie. Well, I, I wanted my invite, and I never received <laughs> it. I didn't get, get an invite. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that must have been hard, because oh, like, yeah. I want to bring Lauren, but I can't. Oh. Yeah, it, that was not easy. Um, would it be televised? You know, I'm not, I don't think we're against it. Uh, honestly, those conversations haven't even started. Um, even, I don't know how they even start. Uh, right now, it was like, let's publicize our engagement. Let's have a lot of fun. Let's enjoy this. Um, I mean, as of last night, who knows, we could have been married on, you know, national TV. So now maybe we'll start talking about the future and, and what that looks like. We'll definitely enjoy it. Thank you. Engagements Thank you. are fun. Um, okay, I want to open it up to these bajillion people out here. So Please. Get some questions. Hi, Ben. Lauren. I just want to say it was an uh, honor oh, to... Oh, right there. I'm sorry. Like... <laughs> Where is she? Yeah. It was an honor to watch you guys uh, fall in love, and as Chris Har Harrison would say, it really was the most dramatic in Bachelor history. <laughs> so my question is for you, Ben. Yeah. During the overnight, Lauren said she loved you, and you said it back. 
But then you said, hey, I known this for a while. Can you talk about when you figured that out? Definitely. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so I've always said on, on really a second cocktail party, so there was something about Lauren out of the limo that really stood out to me. Um, but I knew I had a really cool one-on-one -on -one date that second week. And in order to have that, like, I couldn't invite her on a date the first week, just kind of how things can work out. And so um, I was really nervous Lauren was going to leave, like really nervous all week. And so it was the second cocktail party, and she walked around the corner, and, like, I was talking to Lace at the time, I remember this, and my eyes, like, <laughs> I remember that. Um, hey, Lace, what's up? <laughs> But like Lauren and I's, like I made con like we made eye contact and everything stopped. Like my world just like was totally different at that moment. And I, and she will laugh because I like wanted to go up and kiss her, but I was like I don't even know you yet. Like I, we haven't really even talked. But it was like just like this moment of just like calmness that she was smiling and she was still there. Um, and kind of through the the whole season. My feelings for Lauren never change. They continue to grow and they continue to become like more validated over time. I was just worried, honestly, that it was too good to be true. Uh, you're in a situation that you're going on these crazy cool dates and there's a lot of relationships going on and you're not around the person a ton and so you don't see kind of the, the issues, if you want to call them that. And, and I was just worried it was too good to be true until the moment that I realized it wasn't, that it was actually like the right thing. Like this is what real love feels like. And, and that's when, you know, kind of, on that overnight date when I was like, I've known this for a while, I can't hide that anymore. Thank you. Hi, Ben and Lauren, I'm Perry. Oh Perry. my God, I don't know Hi. how Lauren does this. I'm so nervous talking to you, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what would you both say was your most embarrassing moment on the show? It could be on or off camera. Off camera might be more entertaining. <laughs> uh-huh. Um, do you have one to come to mind? I mean, I'm really glad that they didn't show this because it really would have killed the moment. But while I was walking up oh, during the proposal, I, they had me in like four inch heels walking through grass. And I'm like, okay, really? And I'm already so nervous. And I completely like tripped, almost fell walking towards him. And he's just <laughs> staring at me. And I see him like try not to laugh. And I'm like, oh my gosh, did I really just trip? But thankfully they didn't show it. But that was, I mean... We you know, gotta you get kind that of back. Like, get it's used good. to making a fool of yourself all the time. So definitely, I, and I think like they showed the blooper of the hot tub scene with Lauren and I in the hot tub. It was and so I, him, a hundred percent. It wasn't me. It was actually the hot tub. It was the hot tub. But it was our first date, and I knew it like seemed like me, and I was so embarrassed, like because there's no way to explain it, and you know the more you try to explain it, like the worse it's gonna get. You just look guilty at that point. You I gotta just, just like laugh it off. Yeah, just own it. Um, that was uh, definitely a moment that stands out. I guess that's when editing comes in handy for those moments that you don't want people to see. A hundred percent. Hi, Ben and Lauren. Congratulations. Hi. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, I wanted to know, a lot of bachelors in the past have, you know, when they're kind of torn at the end, thought maybe I won't propose, but we'll date after this. Did that ever run through your mind? Did you consider that? Yeah, so when I started this process, when I was originally asked to be The Bachelor, um, I said the only way I'd do it if it wasn't a forced love. Like if it wasn't at the end, uh, you know, I wasn't a huge, like I didn't not watch a show, but I didn't watch a show religiously like the last couple of years, and I didn't know at the end if you have to get engaged or not. Um, and so I asked, I was like, do you have to? And they said, no, like at the end it is. Whatever you want to do, you can either walk away from it, you can ask us to date, you can propose to that person. Um, and so I said, I'm not going to do this unless I know it's the right person. Uh, and on that last day, uh, you know, it was difficult. My mind is in 100 different places. I'm proposing to somebody. First off, it's just a big deal. Um, I'm also proposing to the woman that I know I want to marry. But I'm also saying goodbye to another woman that I, ha like, I do have strong feelings for. And so it was like something that did cross my mind. Like, is this the best option now? Is just kind of get out of this and then come back and, and like repropose at some point. Um, but I didn't want to walk away from this experience without Lauren. Like, I wanted her to know what I felt for her and that those feelings were real. No matter how weird it is, I knew that I was going to have to explain myself anyways. And um, so I did. But I also uh, am really happy that I proposed her on that day because it was a commitment now that's going to last us forever. Oh. Who's next? We Hi have guys, time. Two I'm next. I'm Julie. Hi. Hey. You guys are so cute. Thank um, you. <laughs> my question for you guys is, are you going back to work? 
good. No, question. they're just gonna do this for the rest. Yeah. <laughs> Here's one thing that I can promise you. Um, okay, so I go ahead because I can. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm a flight attendant, um, and I'm still a flight attendant. So I'm actually supposed to go back to work in April. But the beauty of my job is the flexibility. So you can kind of work as much or as little as you want. And I have a feeling. So far, beginning of April is a little bit crazy for us. I probably won't be flying too much, but the plan is just go back to flying. It's a job that I really like, and it's flexible. I can move to Denver and commute to Seattle. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm excited for our normal lives to um, start back up. I'm very excited. Definitely, yeah. So I work for a software company in Denver uh, called Talasis, and it's a great job. I've worked at it since a, out of college. Um, Will I go back? Probably. I have gone back, um, kind of like temporarily off and on uh, to keep insurance uh, as this crazy stuff's going on. Um, but no, it's been a really good job, and they've been really great to me. Actually, my boss flew in last night for the, the final episode to be with us and watch. Um, the one thing I don't want out of this is like to chase a uh, fame, I guess, if you want to say that. Like, we're open to opportunities, but ultimately, like, this wasn't something I expected. So a year ago, if we would have sat down and be like, this is how your life's going to look like, I would have, I would have been really nervous and confused. Uh, but I think our main goal, and that's why like some opportunities haven't, I guess we haven't accepted them right now, is because we want to concentrate on us. Uh, we want to celebrate this. This is a great thing, and I don't want to continue to, to chase these things and forget that like this is the most important. Um, so that's it right now. So maybe going back to work, moving to Denver, Trying to get back Maybe to life. getting a dog. Mm. We have, we're gone a lot right now. I we're want a dog. About it. Just we're to be clear. So no dancing with the stars. That's what you're saying. Um, not right now. It's, uh, it just doesn't seem like, you know, just with everything going on in our life, it's really great that uh, that show's great, but it's nice to be with her. And I want to make sure that, you know, it's happening right now and not getting our whole lives, you know, super busy again. I respect that. Guys, can you believe it? He said no to Dancing with the Stars. It's a true guy. Um, I think we have time for one more question. Hi, guys. Right Thanks here. for being here. Thank um, you. Ben, it was crazy seeing you in Hudson this past summer. Um, had a little spoiler alert there. So. Were you there? No, but I saw pictures of it. My friends. Oh, really? It. Okay. Yeah, so I was super excited. Um, I just moved from Hudson a couple months ago. So. Oh, nice. Um, I was going to ask you, for both of you, what was your favorite vacation spot that you guys visited? Mm. I would say my favorite spot, just in terms of like maybe the emotional pull, was Warsaw. Going back to Indiana, it's such a small town, and we brought you know this huge like production into Warsaw. It was crazy, and the town freaked out, and a lot of you know a lot of people were super excited, and they came out to support us. Um, it also allowed me to feel a little more normal. We came off of a week in the Bahamas that was really emotional for me. Um, and some of the women were actually sick. I was sick, and so we went back to Warsaw, and I think all of us kind of took that deep breath, and we're like, okay, as crazy as it's been and as weird as it is, like, this feels normal. It feels right. Um, so Warsaw was the best place, but as far as vacation spots, that last house in Jamaica that I lived at is oh my gosh, insane. Uh, it's, it's actually the owner of Sandal's uh, home, and uh, Mick Jagger is actually the one that built it. It is the most like beautiful house I've ever seen in my life. And so that had to be the best spot because I had like a private beach, um, a couple pools to swim in. Life was really good for a couple, a couple of pools to swim yeah. in. Like what? Life's hard, yeah. Well, you got great vacation time and you found uh, your beautiful fiance. So we're very happy for you. We're excited to see where your relationship goes and we're rooting for you and, and enjoy being out in the public. This thank is a you. good time. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here, and thank yeah, you all for, thank you yeah, thank for you. showing up. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it, guys.